Hello and welcome to Inside F1 from Abu Dhabi. Joining me tonight in this very modern desert venue is Eddie Jordan. Now, Eddie, we love being in Abu Dhabi. It's a night race, it's a day race, it straddles both. But how much does Formula One need Abu Dhabi? I think this has become one of the crucial races for the championship. Which means, in that case, we could be losing some decent drivers from the grid. I mean, what about your Paul Dereste as Adrian Soutos? Where do they end up? Well, you, you said that. You know, it's not so long ago that we lost Hulkenberg, but he was able to come back. So there is now a mechanism in place where good drivers could be lost for a season. They take a sabbatical, and yet they re-emerge almost better. Now, in Michael Schumacher's case, that didn't happen. He was not as prolific as he was in his earlier career but nevertheless there's still a lot of very good talented drivers and there's plenty of space for them if they can get the seat how much money are we talking about pastor maldonado bringing to the sport well if the figures are right and they are absolutely staggering we're talking about 50 million dollars you know 35 million pounds or thereabouts whatever the equations work out but it is a significant amount of money and well well done to him if he's been able to do his job to be able to get himself a top seat who would deprive him of it? Okay. All in all, I think uh, I was happy with the car, happy with the balance, uh, especially in the afternoon, which is more important because you know the sun went down or the sun, sun goes down, and uh, yeah, the car and the track changes, so it's important to have a decent car in these conditions. Well, I'm delighted to say that Claire Williams joins us this evening. Claire, it's been a difficult season; everybody knows that. How much strain is there on the team? Do you think the guys are feeling it? Are you feeling it? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's never easy when you're um, you're losing in Formula One it's horrible that's not what we're here for and you know everyone at Williams wants to win so to come to every racetrack and to not do that is really difficult and we're at the tail end of the year now so everyone's a bit tired everyone wants to come and get some points um, so we're, we're still fighting you know there's still a, a good sense of team morale um, we're doing everything we can to make sure that 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 stays for the remaining three rounds. Williams has a, a huge fan base, sorry, Eddie, but and they've also got w winning in their DNA. Um, does the fan base and the popularity that Williams have make a difference at all? Does it make you almost more determined? Yeah, it does. We are so lucky, as you say. We've got some wonderful fans, and there does seem to be a really nice sense of um, goodwill towards Williams across, you know, within the paddock itself. When we won in Barcelona last year, we had all the teams congratulating us, and, you know, that's not necessarily typical in our sport. Um, so we're really lucky that we have that. And, you know, to all the fans that have supported us for, you know, since Frank and Patrick started the team, it's, it's great that we have that, and probably to say thank you would be very nice. In terms of compliance, because you are a public company, um, the responsibility to you for balancing the books is probably more onerous than perhaps any of the other teams. Therefore, are you obliged to take drivers with money to make sure that the, the figures and Williams balanced out in the end of the season? No, we are part publicly traders, as you said. So, yes, of course, balancing the books is always important, but that's always been important to, to the team over the years, and we've always tried to cut our cost according to how much budget we have. And, you know, we're an independent team, so budget and getting as, as much of it as we can to go racing is really important. But it doesn't mean that we have to take pay drivers, no. Um, it's great if a driver brings sponsorship, but most drivers attract some form of sponsorship from their home markets, and it's up to us to make sure that we um, extricate as much as we can off the back of that. Does driver continuity matter at all? Because I think since 2011, we've lost 50% of the F1 field. It's a huge number, wow. a huge turnover yeah. of drivers. Yeah. How much does driver continuity matter? I suppose it helps if they're good drivers. Yeah, I think it does. Um, I think it's important for any team to have that just in the sense of car development so that from one year to the next, then a driver can compare and contrast. It's a vicious circle, isn't it? Because if the team aren't performing, you can't attract the people that you might need into the team that would help boost them up. Well, maybe I'll, I'm not actually speaking for Claire, but I will speak on behalf of my information about what's happening at Williams. I think they've got a new engine next year. I think I know which way they're going on the driver for next year, drivers for next year. And my guess is that you know that there's an upside. There's also some good engineering people coming and leaving other teams to coming to you. So I, I think Claire knows a fair bit. She knows everything. We're trying to just second guess. I think you but know I think a lot that Williams as well. will have a strong season next year because a number of things are being put in place to make that happen. Are you equally confident? You know, I, I don't think Williams has ever come out and started the season being confident because it's not just it's just not our nature to come out and say we're going to be doing X, Y, and Z. But a lot of work has been going on behind the scenes in the team this year, a huge amount. And I think we're all just really desperate to get to the end of the season, do what we can to make sure if we can score some points, we can make sure that all the processes that are, are happening trackside are happening at their best, so that we really go into next year in the best possible position. And you mentioned we've got a great new engine um, for next year in Mercedes. We'll wait and see what happens. 
on the driver lineup. We'll wait, have to wait and see again on what happens on the technical side of the business. But everything is being done at the moment to make sure that Williams changes. It's so important for us. This is a new chapter in our future. And I think everyone's just really excited about next year. And, you know, I hope that we can come out and, and really do a good job for everybody next year. And, and Pat Simmons? Very happy with him? Really happy with Pat. Super. He's great. He's a, he's a great guy. He's got the experience that we need um, to come into the team and to, to make those changes that we do need. And Claire, you, you mentioned Pat. You've obviously got Hezier. But you talk about Frank, who's obviously your father. And you must have Hezier. How helpful is he to you, even if it's behind the scenes? Massively. You know, it's Frank, right? You know, he is an icon of our sport. And, you know, yes, he is my dad, but I'm... I recognize how privileged I am to work with someone like him, mm -hmm. you know, every single day. He's been in our sport for 36 years, longer than that, actually, you know, 45 racing or whatever it is. And, you know, if, if you can't learn from him, who can you learn from? OK, Claire, thanks very much for joining us. Thanks Thank to you. Eddie, too. If you would like to see how qualifying goes, well, we've got highlights for you. Ten past five on BBC One, and I'll be back with the same time tomorrow night with all the reaction after qualifying. So from the desert, this very modern desert, from Eddie, Claire and myself, good night.